Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, free, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 7. For this Melchizedek. All right, Melchizedek. We, we talked about him in the previous chapter for going back to him. After chapter 6, a little break. Now the book is called Hebrews. What Gentile would have any care about Melchizedek? Absolutely none. What person of the church outside someone who, who loves the Bible and studies the Bible? What person of the church would kill, care about Melchizedek? No one. Not many people love the Bible or study the Bible. But who, if you were to mention to a family, Melchizedek? To be Hebrews. Why? Because this is this is part of Abraham's life. And what we're going to do is we're going to look further more by the Holy Spirit, more into Melchizedek. And why? Because we're going to see Jesus. So you see what we've been doing? We've been taking the Old Testament and we've been bringing it to Jesus. For who? The Hebrews. He came unto his own and his own received them not. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, peace. Jerusalem means the city of peace. Salem means peace. Priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returned from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. That's found in Genesis. Genesis 14, 18. To whom? Also, Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Well, who in a church would, would enjoy this message about giving tenths and tithes? <laughs> Not many. So, Abraham, we read in Genesis, gave Melchizedek a tenth. He offered to God ten percent. First being interpret interpretation king. Look at capital K. Of righteousness. And after that also king, capital K, of Salem, which is king, capital K, of peace. So what would Satan do against the Jews? He'd give you the K, K, K. How do you like that one? Oh, Jew, uh, the KKK, they're a Christian organization, but they hate Jews. Really? What did God tell Abraham in, in Genesis chapter 12? I will curse them that curse you. So when you say they cause all the world's problems and they're, they're no more and all that, I need to be careful. But notice that KKK there. King of righteousness, Jesus Christ. King of, of Salem, which is the king of peace. Jesus Christ, our peace. Now, some people go, well, Melchizedek, then he's Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Okay. Without father. Oh, see, that's Jesus Christ. Without mother. That's Jesus Christ. He said he had Mary. Mary gave him a body, didn't give him birth as a God. Without descent. Everlasting. Having neither beginnings of days nor end of life. Can you really apply that to Jesus Christ as a human? He was, he was born and he died. 
we can date his birth. But I think, matter of fact, I think the the Passover is today. I'm not sure. Beginning days nor the end of life, but as God, no, there's no days in life. But made like. That's a big word there. Onto the Son, capital S, of God. He was like the Son of God, but he was not the Son of God. So the characteristics of Melchizedek would be likened to Jesus Christ, but not Jesus Christ. That this priest, the Most High God, Abraham gave an offering and honored. And remember, Melchizedek came to Abraham with bread and wine. Interesting. Abideth a priest continually. All right, after that, we learned about that. Now consider how great this man was, Melchizedek, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham, doesn't that spoke the Jewish ears? One day, hey, yeah, here we are, yay! The tenth of the spoils, the spoils he got from the from the from the army from the fighting. He gave a tenth to Melchizedek. And then he turned around, the king of Sodom, and, and the other one said, well, here, take this. He said, I ain't taking nothing. I'll just take what the men ain't. The, and verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, ooh, doesn't that spark their interest? That's one of the twelve tribes of Jacob, of Leah. Who received the office of priesthood. Here are the priests. Now really unless you're a student of the Bible. Church. You wouldn't care. There is no more priest craft. In fact, the Bible says we are priests. But here we go. Who received the office of priesthood. The Levites became the priests. Having a commandment to take tithes of the people. According to the law. In the law. They were supposed to tithe. And give their tithes to God through the priest. And the priest would live off the offerings. They had the best. When Saul was, was to meet Samuel. Samuel said bring that which was, which I've, I've had. They are to get the, the best parts of the offering. The best fine flour. The first of the first fruits. That would be the best. Of their brethren. The eleven tribes of Israel would give to the Levites the, the, one of the twelve. Though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Of Abraham's seed. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Levite, and then all the twelve tribes. But he, whose descent is not counted from, from them, received tithes of Abraham... Blessed him that had the promises. Melchizedek blessed Abraham. And Abraham gave to him. After the battle. In Genesis. What did I say it was? Genesis. Page 14. Without all contradiction. The less is blessed of the better. And the Bible has no contradictions. And here men that die receive tithe. All right. The priests that got the tithes from the people, uh, they died. They were considered of God to be a chosen people for one specific reason. To do the priestly, to do the office of between the people and God. They got the tithes, but the problem is they died. Now the Bible states the wages of sin is death. So if they died, they died because they were sinners. And here men that died received tithes. But there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth Melchizedek. A man that did not die. Receive. And from that man's office. You have Abraham. And his, and his descendants of Levi. Doing the same thing. But the Levites died. 
And as I may also say, Levi also re who received tithes. Pay attention. Paid tithes in Abraham. So there's no life in the womb. Isaac having been born yet, and when Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, it was counted to Levi, who was not even even a thought of his mother. His mother wasn't even born yet. God's counted a a uh, embryo is not even an embryo yet. His his parents are not even having been embry embryo embryos yet. And it says that in Abraham, that child Levi paid tithes to Melchizedek. So, when it comes to life in the womb, what can you do with that verse? Here's life before the womb. The foreknowledge of God. These two men stand here, and Abraham says, "Here's a tenth to you. You're the you're the you're the priest of the Most High God. I give you tenth. We'll sit down and eat bread and wine." Abraham is believing the promises of Isaac, but God says, I already see that in your family tree, before that family tree even starts root, there's, there's children. It's more knowledge of God. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Now, that's just remarkable. So all these people that say that there's no life in the womb, they're going to stand before the Bible. And the Bible is going to say, Hebrews chapter 7, open to it, that there's life in that womb even before there's life in that womb. The foreknowledge of God. If, therefore, perfection were made by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, Exodus 20, and where God speaks to Moses and he separates the children of Levi, what further need was there that another priest should rise, arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So if Aaron and his sons were so great and that law was so perfect, that we've been read in Galatians that they're trying to bring it back in the church. If it's so great. For the priesthood being changed. There is made of necessity a change also in the law. We have to change it. There's a reason why there's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. We have to change it. For he of whom these things are spoken pertain to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance to, uh, gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord, so that he, in verse 13, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now see, we're talking about the priest, now we're going to Jesus Christ. Sprang out of Judah. Jesus Christ was not of the tribe of Levi. He came from David, that's Judah, of which the tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Psalm 78, 67, and 68. So we have taken, we're looking at the priest tribe, and that priest tribe, though ordained by God, they got a problem. And the serious problem that the Levites had, they died. They died. So out of Judah, now what would grab the attention now of the Jews mentioned in Judah? Somebody they haven't had in a long, long, long time. King. We're looking at king. Now go back to verse 2. King of righteousness, king of sin, king of peace. So we start off with Melchizedek as a king, as a priest, and now we're bringing him to Jesus Christ, who is also king and priest. How's that? And it is yet far more evident, 
For that, after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest, who is, who is made not after the law of the carnal commandments, but after the power of an endless life, eternal life. For he testified, God testified, Thou, Jesus Christ, art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Psalms 110, verse 4, the Messiah. The Levitical priests, they died. That ended their priesthood. You had to get another priest in their, in their hand. Jesus Christ died, but he rose from the grave. He's still living. You don't need to get another priest. For there is verily a disannoying of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect. Now, how do you like that? Be perfect for I am perfect. Be holy for I am holy. And Paul tells the church, be perfect. And yet, the remark here, the law made nothing perfect. Paul said that the law is a schoolmaster. The law is to show you you're a sinner. It didn't make you perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope, Titus 2.13, did. By the which we draw nigh unto God. There is one meeting between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. This is Jesus Christ, our priest. This is Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. That's what Pilate wrote on the title, the charge to, about Jesus on the cross. Remember, boys, remember what, remember what Pilate wrote? The king of the Jews? Here he is. The priest's office? The better priest than even Melchizedek. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of it a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And insomuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this was an oath of him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, let's run back to verse chapter 6, verse 13 again real quick. Let's see what's going on. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessed I will bless thee, and multiply I will mu multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men very swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. For wherein to God will more abundantly show unto the heirs of promise and immunity of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. So, go back to chapter 7, verse 21. God said, by God I am. I am. Son, your priesthood is not after Aaron and his sons. Your priesthood is after Melchizedek. Aaron and his sons, they semi did a good job, but they were sinners and they died. Aaron made that calf. Come on, let's do the boogie woogie. I still don't know why God chose him to be the priest. That was a great ambassador of the people, but God did. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, 
Now Moses laid out the priesthood, what God said, this is what you to do. This is the priestly garment. This is the priestly office, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. But those priests died. Aaron had died and they had to set up his son. But for Jesus Christ, who is forever and is forever, God says, I swear by myself, thou art the priest forever, forever, forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament than you. Now you read that to the Jew. And if, if you got his ears and you got his heart, now you run to the New Testament. Now you show him with the better testament. But you see the Bible outside the scripture some of your bibles wrong when they say new testament and they open up matthew mark luke and john that's not the new testament you need a death you need somebody to, that new testament should have put at at the cross when christ said it is finished and gave up the ghost there's the new testament and now the writer of Hebrews, whoever he is, now has brought the Jews to Calvary. It took him seven chapters and 22 verses. We are now at Calvary. Let me ask you a question now. You know that know their Bible. When you looked at Calvary, minus Jesus Christ hanging from that cross, what did you see on that cross? This is Jesus, King of the Jews. And we just talked about the King. And for the writer right now, not, not tribulation period, but the writer right now, this says 64 AD, about 30 years later. It might be stewing their thoughts. Yeah, I remember that. I remember what it said. The King of the Jews. Well, not only is he your King of the Jews, but now he's your priest. Can you imagine what the priests have been doing running around right now? They're angry. They're trying to kill the apostles. They're happy Jesus died. They're not happy he rose from the grave. That that veil is rent. And the writer of the Hebrews says, hey, it ain't those guys in Jerusalem anymore. And in six more years, it'll be shown. The, the temple will be destroyed. And they truly were many priests. Well, there were. Because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. What separated a Levitical priest from Jesus' priest? But they died. And the wages of sin is death. We're sinners, thanks to Adam and Eve. Now let me ask you a question. i got to bring this up. I have to. Because i got to teach you what the Bible says. Alright, I come from the Roman Catholic Church. And you're going to go sit in that priestly book, box or whatever your church does, however it is. And you're going to confess your sins as a sinner to a priest who's going to die himself. Which states the Bible says that if that priest is going to die, he is also a sinner as much as you are. You're going to go to a priest to have him relieve you of your sin. Though a sinner himself, and he goes to another priest to relieve his sins of another sinner, and you can go that thing all the way to the Pope. All right? Who does the Pope go to relieve his sins in the Catholic Church if you are relying on their priesthood? Who acknowledges and clears that final sin of that Pope? Because the priests do it to the priests, and the priests go to the bishop, and blah, blah, all the way up to the pope. That, that's the chain of, of some forgiveness of sins by the priests. It goes down to the, the person that sits in the pew. The pope is going to die. And if the pope is going to die, and they have died, that means he's a sinner. Many priests. All right? So the doctrine of your priests... By the way, your priests are not Levitical priests. 
They are not of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or Levi. You are stealing the promises of Abraham, a non-Jew. You're Gentiles. That's wrong right there. But let's look at the priests. Because you might be in another church and you have another priest. It may not be Catholic priests. It may be another priest. But this man, 22, Jesus. Because he, Jesus, continuous ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. The only way you can come to a priest and get your sins completely clean and forgiven and done, that priest cannot die. He cannot. So when those that were under the Levitical priesthood of the law died and went to Abraham's bosom, the Catholics call it purgatory. You see what they did? They've given these people a Jewish hope and a new Jewish place to go. Not Abraham's bosom. You don't want to hang around with a bunch of Jews. We'll give you purgatory, and that's where it comes from. Waiting for a priest to live forever never going to happen that's why they can't give you a surety of you going to heaven when you die because no one can fit that like jesus but this man jesus because he continues ever ever has an unchangeable priesthood you can't change it no one takes jesus place how's that that's what it's saying no one can take the place of Jesus as a priest. So if your church teaches that your priest, wherever denomination you are in, it's still wicked and sinful and can't cleanse you. Because your priest will die. The fact is your priest will die is a sinner is going to go to a sinner. That's like having mud all over you and jumping into a, a muddy uh, mud pit to clean yourself. And coming out of that mud pit and jumping into a pool of mud to get clean. It ain't going to work. Wherefore, he, Jesus, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Jesus, verse 22. I'm going to tell you what 25 says. Wherefore he is able also to save you to the uttermost to come to to come unto God by him. And when I grew up as a kid, that would be Father Fontaine. That Roman Catholic priest will use that verse 25 and say, the only way you can get to God is by me. A dead serious, absolutely serious, grown up in a Roman Catholic and with a Polish descent family. You better believe I, I know from my family what, what the Catholic Church taught. I had to know. So Jesus says, run to, to the Bible. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth, the life, well, that's what we're talking about. No man cometh unto the Father, God, 25, except by me. So when your priest lays the crap with his name, coming unto God by, he puts his name there, you run him over to where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life, John 14, 6. John, John 14, 6, and, and Hebrews 7, 25. The one that says, the only access to God is the one that died on the cross. That is me, the better testament. And don't you throw a man's name there. That's wicked. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Now you see that intercession? That's where the priest gets. Well, that's me because I make intercessions to God for you. That would be 25 cents for a candle and I don't know how much they charge the widows. I'm dead serious. That's the Roman Catholic teaching right there. From a priest that will, that priest has died. The, my, the priest I grew up as a, as a child is dead. 
Wait a minute. Let's let's take this one more further for Catholic priest and I'll get off that. But I want you to know, wherefore he is able also to save them the uttermost that come unto God by, let's say, a, a priest in the Catholic. You mean the same priest that molests his children? That sneak off with the nuns uh, secretly that no one knows? That guy who has sinned openly? Jesus Christ ain't going to do that. Jesus Christ is the more faithful. The Better Testament, verse 22, says somebody had to die for 25. That priest hasn't died, and he's not going to die for you. And not only did he die, but he's still living. The only one matches that is Jesus Christ. For such a high priest, oh, look at that. Not only is it just a priest 25, but 26, he's also the high priest. That never happened in the Old Testament. There was never a high priest that was just a priest. And there was, was no priest that was just a high priest. For such a high priest became us who is holy. That be, he, for me, for me, he came to be the high priest to give his life. He's holy. Harmless. He wouldn't touch a little boy. Oh, I'm sorry. No, man. Undefiled. He would never go sneak off with, with anybody he wasn't supposed to sneak off. Separate from sinners. He was not a sinner. And made higher than the heavens. Ooh, I, what are you going to deal with that one with a man? The one that we're talking about, 22, so far, to 27, all will bend the knee. All will proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. All. Save their loss. You really think that's going to be a human? And that's what the Pope teaches. That's why when he comes to your country, people bow down before him and kiss his feet or his ring. I'm serious. So, let's look at the Roman Catholic Church again as far as this. What's the name of this book? He, so, there he goes. It does not say Roman Catholic Church. It does not say Gentile. So, you're misapplying the scriptures for Satan. Thank you very much. Have a good day. We're talking to Hebrews. What we talk about Hebrews, we're talking about their great, great high priest. I mean great. I don't mean as, as a sentence. I mean he is such a great high priest. That's what I'm saying. You Jews, you know what you're supposed to trust? You're not supposed to trust a son of Aaron. You're supposed to trust Jesus Christ. And yeah, we can apply this to the Christian. Here we can do this. But for the Jewish people, that high priest was the next step to God on the Day of Atonement. When he went in to offer for the sins of his self, and he went in to offer the sins for the people. Well, Jesus Christ went through that that veil once. Not for his sins. Sins for the people. And he ripped that veil. There we go. Go show that to your people. Who needeth not daily. As those high priests do. Jesus Christ did not need to do anything. For offering for sin. But for us. And not his. To offer up a sacrifice. For the first for his own sins. That's the Levitical priesthood. And then for the sin for the people. Jesus Christ did not need to offer any sin for himself. For this. He did once. Once. Not every Saturday. Not every Mass. When he offered up himself. You know what the Bible says about this high priest? That can be never said about any other high priest or any priest. What is proclaimed about Jesus Christ? That priest went in there to the, into the Holy of Holies for his sin. Then he went back for the sins of the people with the blood. The priest killed the lamb needed on the Passover. I'll tell you what Jesus Christ did as a high priest. He became the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Not only was he the priest, he was the high priest, and he was the sacrifice. 
Now try that as a man. You can't do it. The closest thing you can get to being something like that is a cartoon. Transformers. You transform yourself into something that you're not. He offered up himself once, 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 once for sin. When that guy sets forth the math and, and does his hake pocus and fuka and, dukas and, and rings the bell and all that, he is proclaiming that, that is the sacrifice for your sins by Jesus every week. How often they do it? Some people do it seven times, seven times a day. I mean, seven times a week, excuse me. That's against the Bible. One sacrifice. And you apply that to the Christian now. You can apply that to the Christian. One sacrifice. Forever. And sat down at the right hand of the Father. Forever. For the law maketh men high priests. Which have infirmity. Aaron. What did Aaron do before he became high priest? Oh. I threw it in the fire and out came this cow. You idolater. And you liar. That's why God chose him. You want to see a sinner of a high priest? Let me look to the founder of your high priesthood. Aaron. Remember what he did before he became one? Now that's not to say hey, that can't do you no good. Look at the foundation. But the word of the oath. Oh God I am. Which was since the law. Making the son capital S. Who is consecrated for evermore. You don't need another priest. You need Jesus Christ as your priest. Jesus Christ wasn't made an oath by smoke coming out of a building. He was made by the Father, Jehovah, God of all creation. And he said, I swear by me. I am. Son, you're that sacrifice. Behold the Lamb of God. So what did Abraham say years after this? Meet in Melchizedek. Father, where's the lamb? Son, God will provide himself. There we go. Abraham already told the people about the lamb of God. He said it would be God. So when you get a man that sits on this planet and proclaims this to be him, guess who he's proclaiming to be? God. And he's a liar. You know how you know he's a liar? Because he'll die. You know, I know Jesus is, is, is God and the Lamb and my Savior forever and ever. Because he's seated at the right hand of the Father right now, alive and well. And praying and making intercessions for me. That's what a priest does. Praise God.